I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is story time. Today, we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi. <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me of course, he's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. <laughs> That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog Toto. <laughs> Hi Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow. Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Toto, oh, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh Toto. I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow. Okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that? A kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful! She was the worst! Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch! Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah! <laughs> Not here, sillies. The last Wicked Witch rules over the West, and she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears, poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. 
But you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen. All hail queen, what's your name? Dorothy? All, All hail, hail queen, queen Dorothy. Dorothy. Hooray, yeah! hurrah. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. All, All hail, hail the queen, queen Dorothy. Our queen. But Dorothy didn't wanna be queen, she just wanted to go home. I don't wanna live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what? Too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? <laughs> I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. <coughs> Ugh, get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. <sighs> uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. 
The wizard! I bet he has brains! Yes, and he's gonna help me get back home! Hey, maybe he could give you some brains! Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing? <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a brain. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, phew! I'm pooped! Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay. Wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry. And that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The Munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Whoa! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along. And now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine, until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never. <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the Great Oz? 
I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad, I think. It is sad. Enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. Wait, oil can. Good call. OK, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look. 475 schmiles to Emerald City? I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in schmiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me, and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story, I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more schmiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? <laughs> oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow? That sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait, we're going to see the Wizard of Oz. 
I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I only want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it, don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Great work! <laughs> now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas had the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. How oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. Ah! Phew, that was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! 
Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. The witch? Oh no. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim. I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Paddle harder. They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail, and I'll pull you to shore. It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me. Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is. Shoo, ah! go away. That was a close one. Dorothy, you came back. Of course, we're here to save you. Okay, yeah, Um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft. Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. <laughs> Big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh, shush. I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> Yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless. I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy voiced. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. What's up, boss? Take this girl to my castle! Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy gonna get home now? Sleep tight, boys! When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine! All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys. <laughs> and they promptly drop Dorothy to the ground below. Ugh. Ow! Ugh. Okay, that was scary. But look, the 
I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second. These shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Ooh. Hi! <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Wow. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. Okay, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful! Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next! Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. 
But the scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not going to do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 9. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the Witch's Castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is, we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Geez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dared try to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No! You give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. 
Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? oh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh, yeah. Now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her! Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm um, actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard. And well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever. So he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the Scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the Scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalitas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalitas. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? 
magic shoes. You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the sapphire slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. <laughs> Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie Em and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pee under her mattress. Oh. Yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pee under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pee. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pee out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading The Princess and the Pea. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, storytime. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first, he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. Wow, that is so mean. 
this went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh. oh, brother, no. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, baggy. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. That princess is so beautiful. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. I can't wait to see what happens next. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself. And she was not very polite. <laughs> Somebody smells like cheese. Not me. I smell good. <laughs> After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle. I wear a crown. It's so shiny. It's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great and love is not. Then I met my prince. Wah, 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 wah. Wait, no. You need to go higher. Ah. Now it's like this. That was hilarious. Ah. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive, she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. What do you think will happen next? Chapter two, here we go. The next morning, Maggie and the Queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. <sighs> Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ugh. Okay, maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. And once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Wow, it's so colorful. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, Your Highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? <gasps> how many does it take? A million? 
a million mattresses. I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. That prince is so handsome. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess peach ass. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pee under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pee under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pee. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pee out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. Wow, this is so fun. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it! Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way, I always win. Mother always lets me win. You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody. Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh this is so exciting. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <laughs> right, got it. Let's go. wait for her to reveal her true self. What do you think is gonna happen next? But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face, you know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. What? No, that can't be. Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist, but why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. 
Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch! She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya! The witch? Oh, no. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch! It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful! That's right. And now you'll love me, too! <coughs> oh, no! The potion! Now we're going to... We're going to... To... I forget what I was going to say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so... So beautiful this morning. Ah, oh, why thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Chapter four, here we go. This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh. Why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, uh, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love. Then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Wow, that is so mean. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water, yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work. And if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse. So bad. A curse? Oh no. Okay, fine. Uh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No, thanks. Face it, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Ooh, that makes sense. Don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah, I guess he's pretty cool. 
I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. Oh, right. Do you have any lizard tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth spell brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. OMG, I love it. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. <laughs> That is amazing! This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Oh, happily ever after. Good morning. Good morning. How long have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> Hi there. It's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Snow White. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, that's my nickname. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> She was smart, A-N-I-S-M, and that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on earth. Oh, that is so nice. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk, but you can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches lived, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. Oh, that's so not cool. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. 
It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm is trying the to most sleep. So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land. Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> Are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. Aw, that's so sweet. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure, of all. Say it then, say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. This is kind of spooky. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Oh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. Oh, that is so mean. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on king business at the semi-annual royal symposium. That's where natural born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the Grim Forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic de-atomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure, that's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ouch! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of a shark, eee! a rotten egg, Gross. a picture of Santa Claus, um, random, and a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? 
Mecca Lekka Ding Dong Cherry Chicken Ping Pong. Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. Oh no, I hope she's okay. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sent Snow White back home. Whoa. Yay, magic to the rescue. And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh, no, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Wow, that is so mean. Hey there, how's it going? Oh, you scared me. Sorry, I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah, you think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince, but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. That is so not cool. She drew angry frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. Oh, <gasps> that's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Oh, now I get it. Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen, and worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh. Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey, do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming. How do you know? How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. 
Yeah, beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. Whew, that was a close one. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Wake up. What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> he is the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See, I told you it was defective. See ya. She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. Okay. This is only extremely very scary. No big deal. <laughs> I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the Troll's Bridge. <gasps> hey there, my sweet. Ah, this is scary. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. <laughs> And so the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, just witch's intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line, or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> This mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him and I have a feeling I'm gonna need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom, looks brand new. <gasps> That's amazing. Awesome! Need anything else? Snake tooth? Lucky pigtail? Lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way! I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there! Hi! <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. <laughs> Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the Troll Bridge? It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait, I know. The mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep. Follow me. Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the Grim Forest, past the Wicked Wart's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. Aw, that is so nice. 
I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but if I do, I'll look for ya. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. Kids, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter 5, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White, and I'm so cool. Blech, it's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said uh-oh because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me, you look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks and don't get it wet. <laughs> He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. Oh, so cute. What? He's really nice, and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. And how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry, fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you. It's you. Oh. Anyway, what I mean is, he's just cool. <laughs> Whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait. I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, huntsman boy. I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness. Be right there. No. Now. I mean, please. <laughs> You better go. She's been super testy lately. Okay. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date? With her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Oh no. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone. I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look rad. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? What would you do if you were there? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talked to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No, out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard. The wizard? He turns people into frogs. Wait, Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said, if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. 
Why won't you fit? Oh, you're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. And I'll miss you, dollhouse, with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. And you, my beautiful dresses. I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the huntsmen and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow White and the Huntsmen set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway because that's just how it is sometimes. When you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Well, that was weird. Look. I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a Manny Petty out here. Whatever, <laughs> I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for, oh no. If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip, zilch, zero. Wait, I know, to the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it, I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect, it's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man, okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> OMG, I love it. My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. 
Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yep. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm going to need a bigger bed. Wow, that was so much fun. Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Good morning. Good morning. How long have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course, I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes. I like corn on the cob and white cheddar cheese puffs and snow cones and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo, though. <laughs> Got it. I'm sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Those dwarves are so funny. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tony. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. <laughs> so, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work in an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines. Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and... Well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. <laughs> I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. <laughs> Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Right. <laughs> I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That okay. would be amazing! Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? Wow, that is so mean. It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. 
Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward Grim Forest. Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Uh-oh, he better watch out. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes, Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're gonna make s'mores. Awesome, will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef! And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for! Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil! Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you, my lady, I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door. Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale. They're so pretty and just your size. You deserve a treat. Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on. These are beautiful. I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free. <laughs> free? Why? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize I'm stuck. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Oh no, Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. She didn't even know what you and I know, that the old woman had really been the evil queen. Goodbye forever, Snow White. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. The queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the Grim Forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting Grim Forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Mm -hmm. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Aw, oh, man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue and it looks just like you. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. The dwarves were so upset, they didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. Those dwarves are so helpful. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. 
Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! Bless you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo! Go away! What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny. We'll have a happy ending. I just know it! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter 9. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? <laughs> that was hilarious. The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop. Hello, hi, ding, 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 ding. Ah! I'm Giddy. Good for you. And I'm the professor. We need to reverse an evil spell. What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone. That worked? Wow. Uh, all right. I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did. I didn't. I love learning new words. Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron. And... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look... yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. Oh no. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up guys, it's time to save Snow White. We have the antsy goat. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes. Guys, we can reverse the spell. Wait, where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right! Statues can't talk? I got it! Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us. Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net! Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um... Oh, that's just a statue. The queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. 
Uh-oh, they better watch out. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a lover, not a fighter! Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. Whew, that was a close one. It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No. Where is she? Over there. Owie. I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it. I love long stories. I'm all ears. But first, we got to do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah. No. Sorry. Majority rules. Evil queen drools. <laughs> that rhymed. Yay. Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad, that's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff. Well, he was back. Yay, I'm so happy. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. I know you want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh yeah, like why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Cinderella. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. <laughs> That's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named a lizard bit, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Oh, so cute. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on. My dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great. But I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <sighs> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. 
But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey! Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. Oh, that's so not cool. My stepsisters had a real sukasa is mikasa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my that's stuff. Mine. I want it. Mine. Gimme. Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes. Here, you can wear this. Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away. They all have to go. I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. Wow, that is so mean. The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. <laughs> I did the vacuuming. And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops. <laughs> I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. <laughs> and I was a mess always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary. But I had my animals, and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi, guys. <laughs> anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give them the boot, right? What would you do if you were there? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. Being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life, especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine, I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really. <laughs> oh, fine. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, a Lizard Beth, Pegasus, 
Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers. Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing, I was all dressed up, no more rags, and I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. Ah! <gasps> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately. This is so exciting. What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa! I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown. <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny. That is funny. You in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. They're rude. I was used to it. But a royal ball? Now this was exciting. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I have to make a dress. And my hair, what am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually wanna talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> A little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! That looks so beautiful. <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh, shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. <laughs> anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes! These must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. And next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. That's amazing. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right. Um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. What? No! That can't be. Wait, what if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um... It's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a... a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I... I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. That's so sad. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. 
What do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. I hope they'll be okay. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? That is so sad. And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. <laughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Wow, that is so cool. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So, how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? Oh, that makes sense. All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand. Wow, that was so much fun. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Ooh, this is so exciting. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean, you, you look, uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday. Huh? Ball gown. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
so magical. And what do you think, honey? I love it. Hi. What's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf going to want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani petty soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabbity boo. These are the bomb. Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect. <laughs> that looks so beautiful. Okay, I better get on my way. Oh wait. Pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just come get it. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am going to look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're going to look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one, always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> all right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those, see, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Oh, this is so fun. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot. You, over there. And y'all, over here. Well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo! Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly, Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh! You! Uh, you scared me half to death. <laughs> that was hilarious. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah! Fairy! You gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. What? No, that can't be. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself, just keep track of the time. No prob, I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is gonna be the best night ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. 
Ah, uh, brother. Or should I say, a sister. <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. That prince is so handsome. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been, um, you guys, oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were Carrie's rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? Oh, cheese puffs. cheesy, oh, yes. Those are amazing. Oh, I love yes. them so much, they're so good. Phew, <laughs> that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo, I am pooped but I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you up. <sighs> Aw, that's so sweet. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh my oh, gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah, blue's my favorite color. No way, mine too. Ooh, common interest, bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? It's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up, I didn't get your name. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Wait up. Oh no. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait, you left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? <sighs> At least the carriage is to... Oh, great. And so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton and I made so many friends and I did a conga line and the limbo and the robot. <laughs> And I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. <gasps> That's amazing. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way. He's going to ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. 
the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. I almost forgot. And wait, Gritzel and Oonga got invited? Oh, boy. Mini Golf Tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. Wow, that is so mean. What girl? This girl Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <sighs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. <laughs> I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yay, I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> You shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to like hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother. <laughs> It'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay. Fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. <laughs> no big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? <laughs> what do you think will happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? Ugh, that's so sad. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nah. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up! Hey, do I know you? Eek! The prince! What do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. What? Okay, gotta go! That couldn't have been. Or could it? Woo! That was a close one. Great. Just great. I blew it. Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella. Oh, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That is amazing. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. 
Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure. He thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So, like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it because I'm a private eye, the keyword being private. But he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. Oh, I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, got to get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, so cute. The bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I... No. Well, what if I... No, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could... Uh, no. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too! Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. 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 Those stepsisters are so mean. Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh man, fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. <laughs> that was so funny. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars. Shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Flippity, bloppity, blob. Blurpity, blap. Magicus, fairyeth, godmothereth, cometh now. If. She's here. Yay. Hello. Official royal business. Open up. Oh, no. The prince is here. <laughs> Let me try on that shoe. Me first. No, me. One at a time, ladies. One at a time. Hi, Princey. Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Ritzel. Huh? Looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. Take that, bad guy. <laughs> And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get it for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mask beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. <gasps> Nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stick it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! Yay, I'm so happy! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> 
super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but <laughs> anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> fairy godmother? There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> the fairy godmother. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. <laughs> Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. Um, fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform Raggedy Ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. Aw, oh, that is so nice. You do? Ew! You don't need a fancy dress or shoes or... Um, hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo! I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on, hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? That is amazing. Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship, a pirate crusty beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. Arrgh, what are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity, zamaboo, ta ta, and bye bye. Yay! Yay! Magic to the rescue! Okay, let's pause for a second, because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Wow, that was so much fun. <laughs> Oh no, where'd he go? Where'd the big bad wolf take my grandma? Oh. I'm outside. Grandma! Grandma! Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Little Red Riding Hood. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'll take it from here. My name is Bonnie, but everyone calls me Little Red Riding Hood. I have no idea why. <laughs> Anyway, my life is pretty cool, almost fairy tale like I live in a house in a small village where everyone is super friendly and nothing bad ever happens. Well, one time the market ran out of chocolate chip cookies and that was a really bad day. <laughs> but other than that, everything is thumbs up all the time. <gasps> That's amazing. 
I'm pretty much friends with everyone I know, but my very best friend of all time is my grandma. <laughs> She's the sweetest, most amazing lady you'll ever meet. We do like everything together. We bake. We travel. We do arts and crafts. We go to the movies. And we just hang out. But whatever we do, it's just great to be together. So anyway, let's get into the story. It all started when I got a call. Hello. Hello, Little Red. It's Grandma. Achoo! Gazootite, are you sick? I think so. My head is achy. My belly hurts. I've got chills. And I can't get out of bed. Oh, no. I hope she's OK. No, that's terrible. I'll be right over with soup and juice and medicine and ice cream. Ice cream is essential when you're sick. Alrighty, I'm all packed up. To grandmother's house we go. I couldn't waste any time, so I decided to take a shortcut through the woods. Even though my mom specifically said to stick to the village roads, and everything was fine. Easy breezy and honky dory, until I started to sneeze. Achoo! That a dog? I'm allergic to dogs. That must be why I'm oh! sneezing. I better hurry up and get to Grandma's house. So I picked up the pace. Hello. Uh oh. She better watch out. Uh, a talking dog? No, I am a wolf. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon, talking wolf. Wait, a wolf? Too scary. Don't be afraid. I am a nice wolf. Okay. Could there really be such a thing as a nice wolf? I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, Bless you. Thanks. I think I'm a little bit allergic to you. Oh, no. Well, then I'll leave you. But could you spare a crumb of food for a poor old wolf? I'm hungry. Well, this stuff is for my grandma. She's sick. I'm going to her house now. Is that right? Well, I can't let you do that. <laughs> you, you can't? No, I insist you must pick some flowers first. Oh, pick some flowers? <laughs> yes, it will cheer your grandmother up. Oh, and do you know any jokes? Jokes? Her laughter is the best medicine. You absolutely must tell her some jokes. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring her some flowers and tell her some hilarious jokes. She'll be better in no time. Say, do you know any jokes? Oh, certainly. What do you call a lost wolf? What? A werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, how about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Werewolf. Werewolf who? Werewolf I find the bathroom. <laughs> how about this one? What did the wolf say when someone stepped on his foot? What? These are pretty great. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh my, what big teeth you have. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Well, goodbye. And with that, the wolf bounded away into the woods. He seemed nice enough, right? Hmm, I don't know about this. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Grandma's gonna love these flowers, but I better get going. It's getting late. So I skipped ahead to Grandma's house, and again, everything was just fine until I huh? Uh, tripped. Uh, uh, huh? I'm stuck in a trap. But who would set a trap? I've only seen that wolf around here, and he seemed perfectly nice. But what I didn't know at the time, kids, was that wolf was not nice at all. In fact, he was bad. The big bad wolf? Oh no! In fact, I am so bad that people call me the big bad wolf. I'm so bad that I do things like huff and paw and blow your house down. So bad that one time I ate a little boy just because he kept crying wolf. And now I've set a trap for Little Red Riding Hood all because I want to get to Grandma's house first. Why, you ask? Well, because I'm going to eat her. Don't act surprised. I told you, I am bad. 
So, Little Red Riding Hood is probably stuck in a trap somewhere. And look at me. I'm on my way to Grandma's house. Bon appetit. Hello. Grandma, it's me. Ah, watch out. Meanwhile, ugh, I'm totally stuck. All right, time to show off my survival skills. Super crucial survival skill number one, yell for help. Help! 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 Kids, I yelled and yelled, but it didn't seem like anyone was around to hear. What's that saying? If a tree falls in a forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Well, that's how I felt. Like a sad, lonely tree. Hello? Huh? Hello? I'm over here! Where? Here! Keep talking! I'll follow your voice! Oh, well, I've been stuck here for a while, and I was going to my grandma's because I was, I was, but I stopped because there was a wolf, because then I said, so I got some flowers, and then I picked the flowers, I put them in my bag, and I was running, and I was running, and I was so tired, I was a little bit hungry, too. And you know, I feel like I'm kind of sweating. It's a little bit humid today, and, oh! Hi, I got stuck in this trap. Can you help me? Of course. There you go. Oh, I'm free. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Name's Big Al, licensed lumberjack. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Pleased to make your acquaintance. You may be wondering what I'm doing in the woods this late. Well, I'm on my way to my grandma's house. See, she's sick. Everything was fine until I got distracted by that old wolf. I think I'm allergic to him. And then I got stuck in this darn trap. You say you saw a wolf? Yeah, a talking wolf. Crazy, right? Did he have a fancy sounding accent? Yeah, he did actually. How did you know? That wolf is bad news. But he seems so nice. Little Red, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk with you the rest of the way to your grandma's house. You know, that wolf, he might be dangerous. Oh, I'd be most appreciative, Big Al. Aw, that is so nice. So Big Al the Lumberjack walked with me, keeping watch for the wolf. But we didn't see him. And I didn't have any sniffles or sneezes at all, so he must have been far away. <gasps> Look, there's my grandma's house. Thanks for the escort, Big Al. <laughs> no problem. See you around. Grandma, it's me, Little Red. <clears throat> Come on in. Wow, she sounds really sick. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> Grandma? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hello, Little Red. Need a tissue? Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, so that's not my grandma, obviously. It's the big bad wolf, but he's wearing my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> As if that would fool me. Whatever, I'll just play along. What would you do if this happened to you? Wow, grandma, you look real sick. Yes, I'm quite ill. I mean, just awful. You look dreadful, terrible. Okay, I get it, enough. And my, how big your teeth look. I don't remember your teeth looking so ridiculously huge. Oh, I mean, oh. And you're so hairy. I don't remember you being so fuzzy. I should probably give you a nice shave. Let me go fetch a razor. No, I mean, I should lie down. I'm feeling quite queasy. Oh, of course. So I tucked in the big bad wolf. Weird, I know. <laughs> he actually did seem a little ill though. Went out like a light. Never mind that. I needed to find my grandma. I looked all around the house, under beds, behind the curtains, inside cupboards, in the basement. Grandma? In the closets, on the roof. Grandma? Everywhere. Where could she be? But then I heard something. Uh, grandma? I looked everywhere. Where could the sound be coming from? Little Red. I followed the sound of my grandmother's voice all the way to... Help me! Huh? Get me out of here, Red! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Shh, the wolf is sleeping. How did you get inside his belly? He ate me! What? 
swallowed me in one gulp. Lucky for me, he doesn't chew his food. That's why he was feeling so queasy. Well, I'm gonna get you out of there, Grandma. Don't you worry. Hurry. Achoo! Bless you. Thank you. So kids, I was really in a pickle. How was I supposed to get my grandmother out of the big bad wolf's belly? I decided to consult an expert, the internet. Uh, I keep trying to get grandma to upgrade. Come on, come on. I'm in a hurry, internet. What's time for this? Yeesh. Finally, okay, here we go. What? to do when your grandma gets eaten by a big bad wolf. Hmm, says here I gotta make the wolf throw up. Ew. Gross, or else I'd have to perform surgery to get her out? Ugh, I know, I'll call the veterinarian, of course. Hello, Dr. Veterinarian? I have a bit of an emergency. I need an operation for my uh, pet, wolf. Oh, you don't? Okay, thanks anyway. <sighs> Okay, so it turned out the veterinarian had a strict no wolf policy. Okay, Grandma, looks like we're gonna need to do the throw up thing. Yuck. Oh, oh no, where'd he go? Where'd the big bad wolf take my grandma? Oh, oh no, run! I ran outside. Grandma! Grandma! I figured the wolf couldn't have gotten very far, so I set off through the woods to find them. But the woods were getting a little dark and extra scary. Uh, but I knew I had to be brave to rescue my grandma from the big bad wolf. Slow down, you're jostling me. Can it, Granny? Mind your manners, young man. I've got to remember to chew next time. What was that? Boy, I wish I had picked a less annoying grandma to eat. Oh. I heard that. Grandma! Ah, oh no, not her. Over here, little red. Ow, jostling. Grandma, Grandma! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. You know me, of course. I am the big bad wolf. Yes, we all know you're big and bad, whoop de doo That's little red's grandma. She's in my belly. Yeah, and it stinks to high heaven in here. Shush, Grandma, and quit moving around in there. You're giving me indigestion. You just wait. Little Red will come and save me. She's the smartest little whippersnapper I ever saw. But she has to find me first, and she'll never do that. <laughs> that is so not cool. Check it out. I've got the best video games, a milkshake machine, a foosball, and a super classy waterbed. This is where I hibernate, AKA nap for the entire winter. Wolves don't hibernate. That's for bears. Well, that's not fair. Hibernation is the best. You eat a huge meal, and then you settle down for a long winter's nap. What could be better? Whatever. And you should be glad, Granny. That means you'll be safe in my tummy for a long, long time. So, I've been all over the dark woods looking for the big bad wolf and, of course, my grandma. For a while, I could hear my grandma calling for me, but then I lost track of her. Grandma! 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 See? Nothing. I was so scared. What if I never found her? I was starting to freak out. And when I freak out, the only thing I can do to calm me down is a solo dance party. Wow, this is so fun. Little Red? <laughs> Celebrating because your grandma's all better? No, not even close. She's gone and I can't find her, Big Al. You were right about the wolf. He's big and he's bad and he ate my grandma. What? Yeah, I know. So I've been looking all over for her and it's like they just disappeared. So, you're dancing? That's what I do to calm down. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, let's go find your grandma. You'll help me? Of course. You think I'm gonna stand by while some big bad wolf is terrorizing nice girls and eating their grandmas? It's on. 
All right, <laughs> let's go kick some big bad wolf tail. <laughs> so we were off to find the big bad wolf and rescue my grandma. <laughs> A gazillion hours later. But the finding part turned out to be really super crazy hard. It seriously was like the big bad wolf had just disappeared into thin air. Oh, where are they? We've looked all over the woods and no sign of them anywhere. Oh, and my nose didn't even tingle once. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm allergic to the wolf, so when I'm near him, my nose gets all itchy and sniffly. It's like my spidey sense. I see. And no sniffles? Nope, I'm the perfect picture of health. Unfortunately, I feel like we just need a lucky break. I know, right? Well, no use in hanging around here. Yeah, let's go. What? No, that can't be it. That's right, walk away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> what? Is Little Red nearby? Little Red, I'm right here. Come back. It's no use, Granny. Just about time for my nap, so keep it down in there, okay? Uh, what? What was that? Nothing. Shh. I knew she'd come back. Little Red, Little Red. Big Al, I sneezed. Oh, sorry. Bless you. No, Al, I sneezed. Oh, right. That means... He's right under a uh, uh, nose. Whew, that was a close one. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey guys. So yeah, I was starting to fear I'd never find the big bad wolf and save my grandma. But then my reliable big bad wolf detector went off. My allergies. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, so he's gotta be here somewhere. But where? Huh? Is he hiding up in the tree branches? Maybe he has a tree house. Tree houses are very cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like there's anything up there. I don't get it. We've looked all over. To the left, to the right. We've looked up. Hey, we haven't looked down yet. Oh, well, I think that we would have noticed if you're sitting on the ground, Al. <laughs> Maybe he's underneath the ground. Hmm, like a super secret big bad wolf hideout or something. <gasps> I know it sounds crazy, but... Hey, what's that blinking red light? Huh? Uh-oh, they better watch out. Looks like a security camera. In the woods? Ah! Did you hear that? The wolf! Haha, <laughs> we're on to you, wolf. Yeah, watch out! Here we come! Uh, Big Al, how do we get down there? Good question. Wait, I got it. Okay, nope, that don't work. Ha 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 ha, nice try. Dang, now how are we gonna get down there? Um, Big Al, look. Hey, did I do that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of an accident, but whatever, let's go. Gotcha. Freeze, Wolfie. Little Red, thank goodness. Okay, Wolf, it's time to give me back my grandma. Cough her up. Never. Well, I guess Big L is going to have to chop her out. Yikes, no way. Whoa, 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 that's not really in my job description. Okay, well, then the Big Bad Wolf is going to have to throw her up. Oh, I hate throwing up. It's icky. Well, it's icky being inside here. Do what Little Red says. Ouch, did you just kick me? Yeah, and there's more where that came from, too. Ow. Cut it out, Granny, or I'll eat Little Red here for dessert. Oh, no, you won't. hi -ya! <laughs> Grandma! Little Red! Yay, I'm so happy. Yuck! Oh, now my breath totally stinks. Ew. Oh, Little Red, I am so glad you found me. Me too, but my job's not over yet. Big Al, let's tie this wolf up. Tie me up? You're going to jail. No! Pretty happy ending, right? <laughs> we saved Grandma and the big bad wolf was about to go to jail. Uh, Little Red? Yeah, what? He got away! What? How? What? No, that can't be. I don't know. He just up and vanished. Granny, did you see which way he went? Don't ask me. Oh no, the big bad wolf is on the loose again. 
<laughs> oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So, the big bad wolf had escaped, just gone. The moose split like a banana. There must be a secret tunnel or something. Cool. This isn't cool, Big Al. We have to get to the wolf. He's a villain. Come on. A secret hideout with an underground escape tunnel? You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. Not if we can't find the escape tunnel. I mean, do we just poke a book or something and the doorway just opens up? Ah! Hey, you found it. Grandma! It looks just like a water slide. Come on, Big Al. We're going in. Wow, that is so cool. Woohoo! We're coming for you, Grandma! Okay, little red! Ah! Ouch! Ow! Uh, ow! It's dark down here! Where are we? I think we're in the sewer. Like those Ninja Turtles. That means we must be close to town. We'll just climb out and find the police. They'll be able to help us catch the big bad wolf. Nice try, but no. This is actually a dungeon. <laughs> ah, the big bad wolf! That's right, and you're my prisoners now. Forever! <laughs> you're trapped. You'll never get out. Wow, that is so mean. No way! Let us out! Huh? Ah! A good lumberjack never travels without his tools. Well then, I guess I'll just have to... Oh, I guess you're just trapped down there forever now, huh? <laughs> Sad. Okay, so now I can finally report that there was a happy ending. We fetched the police and they came for the big bad wolf. Big Al and I got super cool deputy badges and our pictures in the paper. And Grandma got a high-tech security system to keep the big bad wolves out. Hello? It's me, Grandma. Hi, not a big bad wolf or anything. <laughs> just making sure. Gotta play it safe. And best of all, I got my grandma slash best friend back. <laughs> I went to visit her like every single day. Big Al even came over sometimes. And we would just sit around and laugh about the time the big bad wolf got trapped in his own stinky dungeon. <laughs> and eat ice cream, of course. <laughs> ice cream is essential when you're hanging out with friends. Wow, that was so much fun. Uh, I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming. Bye.